Assalamu alaikum. In our series, our mini series, about the beautiful verses in Surat Al Hujurat, I've spoken about a few verses about the character building of a Muslim, which you cannot live without. Faith and belief is not enough without practicing based on those faith and belief. And we, re we have reached the last verse of Surat Al Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ So Allah says, And do not backbite or gossip about one another. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his brother or sister while they're dead? From their corpse? Oh no, Allah says, that's an abomination, you wouldn't like that. So fear Allah, he says, and Allah is forgiving and merciful. Backbiting is something which everybody dislikes, everybody hates, nobody likes being backbitten. In fact, anyone who merely hears even a hint that someone had said something even a little bit wrong or bad behind their back, even if it's true, it destroys relationships big time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this is so abhorred because if somebody saw a dead corpse on the floor, they wouldn't eat from its flesh. That's how bad backbiting someone is. And it's interesting how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes a parable, a comparison between backbiting and eating the flesh of a person. That's how bad it is. It is stinky. It is bad. It's corruption and it destroys all relationships. Of course, not only the person who backbites, but also the person who listens onto it with joy. A lot of people don't really know what gossip or backbiting actually means. Islamically, there are two types. The first one is when well, that's what the Prophet, peace be upon him, described. He said to his companions one day, do you know what ghiba is? Do you know what backbiting is or talking about someone in their absence in gossip is? They said Allah and his messenger know best. He said, it is to say something about your brother or sister, about another person, in their absence, when they're not around, that they do not like you to say. One companion said, a messenger of Allah, what if it's the truth? He said, that is exactly what backbiting and gossip is. If it is not true what you're saying, it's even worse. He called it ta'an. Ta'an means slander. And that's even a worse sin than just merely saying something truthful about someone else in their absence, but it is wrong. You might be asking, what if the person is okay with it? Yes, I mean, if they told you, I'm okay with you talking about me such and such behind my back, it wouldn't become a sin, but it's not advisable either. You should be of a higher character than that because then again, I've seen people who become uh, enemies to each other or their friendship dissolves. And then they look back at the times when you spoke about them and they start to suspect that maybe you had a room for them. So the shaitan has his ways around. Avoid backbiting as much as you can. As for slandering, it's to say something that's wrong or false about that person. But saying something good about the person is not considered gossiping. In fact, it's a good thing. Unless you know that your friend or that person, whoever it is, doesn't even like you to say a good thing about them, then you should avoid it. If you suspect or are in doubt, then don't say anything until you seek their permission. A Muslim should defend the honor and the reputation of another Muslim or anybody who is innocent behind their backs, and it's highly rewarding. However, some people have asked, well, is there any situations where backbiting is allowed? Well, yes, there are, but that's not called backbiting. It's called permissible talking about someone in their absence in a negative way. And now here are the six. Number one, these are all taken from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is agreed on by all the scholars. The first way that a person can talk about someone behind their back is when you are complaining about a right that has been taken from you. Usually, 
who is the person you would go to complain about that right? It would be a person of authority. If you are a child, then you would tell your mum and dad. If you're at school, you would tell your teacher or the head or the principal, whoever it is. If you're at work, you can write a complaint to the uh, resource department, the um, human resource department, whoever can do something about it. Just because somebody's right has been taken, we are not permitted to go around ruining the reputation of that person who took our right, except to mention exactly what has been taken from us necessarily to the people who can do something about it. It's amazing that even when our rights are taken or a right is taken, Islam still says you've got to still cover up for the dignity of other people. Don't destroy everything about them. Unfortunately, the shaitan does come to us and as soon as someone violates one little right of ours, even if it's something small, we are ready to declare war against everybody. And it's a shame that some families, as soon as they hear something really small, they want to cut off the entire family and sever the ties and they put even conditions on their children. Don't talk to your aunt, don't talk to your uncle, they backbit us. No, in Islam, it's not all or nothing. There are some things that people do wrong and we avoid their wrong, but it doesn't mean we cut off everything. We can minimize, we can distance if it's something big. And at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. Have you and I not ever said anything about anyone before? So let's think about it that way. The second way that a person can talk something negative about someone is if it's for identification purposes. So normally we can't really talk about people's features unless it's a good thing. But if they've got some abnormal features, we're not permitted to talk about that abnormal features, such, such as to say to somebody, you know, that person who's got such and such blemish in their nose or the way they walk or that short person and so on. Unless there's no other way to identify them. Let's say we forgot their name, we forgot what they look like or how to describe them. We say, you know, that person that limps, for example. Now, although this is negative, and it could be negative to the other person, we intend good. We just want to identify them for something good and speak well about them. So that's the second way that we can talk about someone behind their back. The third way to talk behind someone's back is for the purpose of business. You want to go into a partnership with someone or somebody's asked you for money or they want to get into a contract with you or some kind of work that involves uh, consequences if you're not sure about their honesty and trustworthiness. If you don't know someone, you're allowed to go and ask about their reputation and their honesty. Obviously, you have to be careful not ask about everything about them. And if you do know something, you have to keep it a secret. So it's all done with cautious. You want to know if somebody is honest in their dealings, then you'll have to ask about them before you go into that. But remember, as I said, keep it within a careful boundary. Number four is for marriage. Somebody wants to know about someone for purpose of marriage. It's only common sense and normal. In fact, you have to ask about that person. Perhaps sometimes you need to ask other people who uh, outside of the family to know about them. It's a lifelong decision. Therefore, Islam allows a person to seek information about a prospective spouse. Obviously, it has to be done within conditions, and that is not to ruin the person's reputation. The person who talks about them should also talk good about them. Number three, so long as not vindictive or out there with an agenda. And number four, very importantly, whatever that person finds out, whatever the person says is kept within that circle. It stays private. Their dignity, their reputation has to be guarded, and we don't spread it. Number five is when somebody is an open evil person. If somebody is an evil pe pe person, especially if they're going to harm someone, you're allowed to warn people. So it's called warning. Warning someone about the character or the vindictive behavior of someone else. In fact, it's advisable in certain situations. And number six is when you need a fatwa. You sometimes probably need to go to a sheikh, an imam, an expert, a doctor. So fatwa can be not just religious, but anything. Uh, medical advice uh, for someone that you care about, someone you have a problem with, such as to say to the Imam or the Mufti who has uh, great knowledge, to say my father or my mother or my child or my cousin or my friend, this and that happened between us and you possibly have to tell them something that's negative, then you're allowed. But the condition of that is to keep it between you and the person who can do something about it and give you advice and for the purpose of fearing Allah and doing the right thing. So these are the six cases where talking about someone behind their back is allowed. Otherwise, it is a major sin. And even the person who listens to it, the way to remedy it, if anybody has gossiped about someone else, well, if it's something minor that everybody says and it's not going to really harm them, 
ask Allah to forgive you and just try to talk good about that person and don't do it again. But if it's something major that is going to have a consequence, you will need to have to fix it. Whether it's on social media, you need to go and delete it, you need to get rid of it, or you need to, if you've done it in open, you're going to go back in open and tell the people what you've done wrong. If it's in a group of people that you were sitting with and you happen to say something that could be detrimental to the other person, such as ruining their reputation, the chances of marriage, the chances of employment, uh, probably even to be physically harmed or something, whatever, or could lead to severing ties, whatever the case is, you need to go and fix it before it's damage. And of course, that's if it's outside of those six conditions that we talked about earlier. Um, also, if uh, a person has done something like that before and can't go back to the group or can't go and fix what they did wrong, what the scholars said is try and go and ask them for forgiveness. Obviously, you can't always ask for forgiveness. And uh, in fact, uh, I would agree that 70% of the time or so, if you go and ask for forgiveness, it'll make the situation worse, depending on what we have gossiped about. But if that doesn't work, then we try to fix the situation. If that doesn't work, we start talking well about that person, of all the good things that we know about them. And if we have forgotten who we've gossiped about, we can always make dua for them. Or if we remember them, but we can't reach them, say, make dua for them, give a charity on their behalf, for example, although that's not uh, uh, an obligation. It's just an idea to try and uh, make up for the mistake that you made. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we all make mistakes and we all want an amazing community, society, family. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does end this uh, instruction with a beautiful verse where Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. O people, O humans, we have created you from one man and one woman. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا And we made you into many nations, tribes and races. In order that you may know one another and identify one another. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The most honored among you to Allah is the one who is most God fearing and righteous. Inna Allah alimun khabir. Allah is all knowing of all people's affairs. He is well acquainted with all of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and myself and forgive us, uh, raise our ranks, protect us from all evil and keep our communities united, our families together. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Jannah our abode. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.